Hello, listeners. Welcome to another episode of Love is Everywhere, the podcast, the podcast where I give comedians assignments of things that are supposed to make you happier, and then I talk to them about it, and we find out how it went. Uh, today's guest is Brian Millward, a fantastic stand-up comedian from here in Toronto. Uh, his assignment had to do with positive outlook and connection with others. Um, we we take a little while to get into his assignment because we got really sidetracked <laughs> at the beginning, and then we take a pretty wild tangent towards the end. Um, so look forward to that. Um, but <laughs> this was a really fun chat. We went to a pretty silly place. Um, I think I might have made Brian a little uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> we had a really good time. Um, if you want to go support Brian's work, he runs a fantastic show called Sass 2.0. Uh, that happens at Comedy Bar the last Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Um, if you want to come and see me do things, you can check out my website, tracyhamilton.net. Um, and if you want to support this podcast, go subscribe, uh, go like it, rate it, review it, uh, tell your friends about it, hire a skywriter, um, whatever you want to do, uh, <laughs> one, one or all of those things. Um, <laughs> I don't know how expensive skywriters are, but, uh, we appreciate all of the skywriting that we've gotten so far and we look forward to more. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, uh, please enjoy this conversation with Brian Millward. Brian Millward. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Oh, hi. I was like, wait. Yeah, we're just starting. I'm thinking there's going to be an intro song no. or something, a little there, background on me. There will be for the <laughs> listeners, but not for you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so we start with an honest, how are you? So how are you? For real? Oh, for real? Today I'm just starting to fight a bit of a sore throat because mm-hmm. I've had lots of holiday parties and things like that throughout the week. That'll so, wear you down? Yes, very much so. And so I think the physical is a representation of the mental yeah. <laughs> fatigue <laughs> and strain mm-hmm. that I'm feeling right now. Or you have a bit of a, an emotional sore throat. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> of a sore soul. Yeah, a little bit. You little know? Bit. Because I find, I don't know, the holidays always, I feel like the, the holidays are very, like, dichotomous. Mm-hmm. It's the most wonderful time of the year. But at the same time, all the problems of the world, all of the problems of yourself, yep. all the problems of your family, all the problems of your bank account. It's a lot. They all rear their ugly heads at the same time. And so you I feel like for a lot of people, this time of the year gets very exhausting because you are forced to go along with the festivities Mm -hmm. and the enjoyment and the magic that somehow just (laughs) manifests itself um, while also trying to push away and almost deflect and, you know, deny, you know, the realities Mm -hmm. that are our lives and that are of the world. And so that's how I'm feeling. (laughs) I get it. I get it. Also, like we're recording this like right before Christmas and it's like, this is also the end of the year, so mm-hmm. there's that kind of part, like even apart from like the holiday stuff yeah. and all of the family, oh yeah, things it's and the money, reflection. the money stuff. It's like a time of reflection. It's like the closing up of the year, and this is like we're going into a new decade, which I did not realize <laughs> till about a week ago when everyone started making these Comments like, like end that? of the decade posts. Mm-hmm. And I was like. <laughs> Like, why's everyone getting so goddamn emotional? It's just 2020. And then I started seeing like the memes and things pop up. And I was like, oh, right. I guess this matters <laughs> to people. But here's the crazy. So here's the crazy tip that I've learned. I no longer subscribe to time. <laughs> the and magazine or the, the concept in both, general? All. It's too expensive. <laughs> but literally, it's like I like the concept of time just does not exist in my mind I think the way it does for other people mm. like I'm so bad at remembering dates I cannot tell you like how many years ago I graduated from school how many years ago I did this or did this trip or did that and some people would call that dementia but others would call I consider it a real freedom of like having to keep tabs yeah. And, you know, because people say, oh, if I don't, you know, if I'm not married with kids by the time I'm 30, then I failed. 
what the hell's wrong with 31? Mm -hmm. Like 31, you're dead? Like, no, you've got time. There's like, there's nothing stopping you or holding you back from accomplishing any sort of goal at any time in your life. And so I've kind of, you know, through my... <laughs> yeah, throw time out the window. Throw Forget time out the time. window. Anytime someone says, oh, when was, you know, when did so-and-so and so-and-so get married? I go, oh, three, four years ago for everything. Yeah, just make every three, answer four years three or four years everything ago. Everything was three or four years ago. <laughs> and if you ask me what year that was, could not tell you. I know. Could not tell you what year three or four years ago was. <laughs> I'm the same way. Like, I can't, I can't remember what year I did anything. Like, no. when people give me a year, like a number... Uh-huh. Where they're like, oh, yeah, and like in 2013, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't remember what 2013 was. When I measure everything in what haircut I had oh. at the time. <laughs> That's how I'm like, I have to think. And, and I'm I've like, OK, there. I had this haircut. I had like an asymmetrical oh. bob. Uh, and like <laughs> the two of us have had a very extensive hair history. We have. And unfortunately, this is not a visual medium. But <laughs> no, it's not. if you want to go, <laughs> if you want to go through our Instagram feeds. <laughs> oh, what a journey! We've been so many different people. <laughs> we have, and I love doing. I love doing stamp comedy because every time, I because there's a community, but you only see people. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're on shows with them, you know, yes, yeah, so you so, can go without seeing somebody for quite for a while. Months. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah, people are still so shocked that now my hair is so short. Mm-hmm. And it's like, was that literally the only thing <laughs> that you could remember about me? Or like the only ugh. thing that's kept me consistent in the last couple of years with haircuts is headshots. <laughs> now that, now that I, get, I still want to change my hair all the time, but I know that I'm going to have to drop like hundreds of dollars to get new headshots if I change my hair. So I don't. Um, I know what the best part is. <laughs> don't give two shits about those headshots. I know. It well, I do me acting up. and stuff like that too. So oh. like oh. for my agent's sake, it's mm. like, I don't want her to get mad at me. <laughs> Bella, I love you. Um, <laughs> my favorite thing is when can be like... And dang it, this, I'm supposed to be kind today, but let's just talk some shit. <laughs> let's do I it. get such a kick out of Toronto stand-up comedians, like, revamping the headshot. <laughs> and I'm like, honey. You look the same. No one cares. <laughs> like, nobody, nobody cares. You put that face on a poster. It is not going to affect the ticket count. You know like, what? It is not... Yeah, I know. That's the thing. It's like, like, you change the backdrop from white to blue. Congratulations. <laughs> like, yeah, a lot, like, a lot. A lot of the poster shows and stuff like that for shows in Toronto will have our pictures on it, uh-huh. like of the comedians who are performing, uh-huh. which would make sense if we were any kind of draw or name at all and had any kind of fan base of our own. But <laughs> I think it's more to give the sense of like, you should know like these my people. my mom knows my face. Yeah. <laughs> my mom knows my face and she's going to come to the show regardless. <laughs> Like, oh, it cracks me up. But I, that's, that's one of the reasons I love, I love, love, love doing stamp comedy, especially in Toronto, is the fact that like the audience is like gambling. Like they're going to the comedy casino. Yeah. And there are seven acts on the show and our names have been out there, but they got no clue. It's like if I was going to, it's like if I was going to bet on horses. Yeah. I don't know the stats on these horses. (laughs) I don't know what they're doing. One of them's called Just the Tip, and yeah. I like it, so I'm going to put my money on it. Like, that's literally the amount of investment audience members have in Toronto stand-up comedy. And so I kind of love the fact that, like, when they come in, and I think, you know, as comedians in Toronto, we should give ourselves a break. Or really in any, you know, if you don't have a fan base, mm-hmm. if no one's paid you, if you're not if you're not contractually obligated, like, this is the freedom we should all feel, is the fact that, like, you can bomb... But there was no expectation. Like the audience literally just came in hoping that you would that one of these several comedians on the lineup would, would be funny. Would be funny or maybe would relate to them or mm. they're, you know, maybe they're going through something. They're like, Man, I'd really love if someone would talk about my Aunt Gail. And like, ah, oh, dang it, I missed that one. Yeah. And so it's like if there's, you know, if something doesn't go right or if like if I'm not jiving with the audience like yes there's obviously things that I can work on but at the same time too yeah that doesn't have like running consequences afterwards yeah because guess what whether I crush it or whether I bomb they're still not gonna recognize that headshot it means nothing to them you know what I like that though and that is kind of freeing in a way to think of like 
uh, I don't know, even outside of stand up that like your failures aren't as memorable to other people as they are to you. Yeah. Right. That like mm -hmm. you're the only one who's really holding on to that mm -hmm. bomb. You're the only one who's really holding on to the times that you failed or didn't meet your own expectations. Yeah. And like everybody else just moves on. Yeah. Like nobody else is stuck on the fact that you didn't do well on that show. Yeah. Right. They're just Literally like, they're like oh, OK, on they're to the next like, comedian. Dang. That's fine. I can make those $10 back. Yeah, like, too bad, not for me. And yeah. on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I remember there was one comedian. This happened when I was in, in Montreal, and which is why I've never been back. <laughs> 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 um, they were, I did this show. You've probably done it, the one in the, when you're in the apartment building. No. I haven't done that one? Mm -mm. Okay, so you're in someone's apartment building. It's very intimate. It's very, you know, and you can see everyone. It's well lit, all that sort of stuff. It's loads of fun. Um, I went and did it, and like what i call it a bomb i don't know there was a couple sitting in the front and i saw the woman like the girlfriend i'm assuming put her hand on her boyfriend's leg as like a way of being like baby only has seven and a half minutes oh, left like no. it was one of those like it was all oh, so funny and then afterwards <laughs> i'm like out because then everyone just hangs out afterwards in the apartment <laughs> and so i'm on the balcony and people are having smokes or whatever. And this guy comes up to me and he's like, you've got a great sense of humor. You're really like, you've got really good timing. You're really funny. Um, but like just, uh, it was a lot of gay stuff. It was uh. like a lot. It was a lot of gay stuff. <laughs> oh and God. like, and the funniest thing was, was like, he wasn't, um, he wasn't intimidating. He wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. he wasn't yelling. He was talking in a perfectly, you know, mannered mm -hmm. tone. And he was just saying, oh, yeah, I think you've got a great sense of humor. It was just it was just too much gay stuff. And another comedian like heard him and jumped in and like railed on him <gasps> and was like, how dare you? You know, just laid in on him. I think in my defense, yeah. he was doing this for me. And after it was all done, you know, the guy was like, well, I didn't want to be yelled at. So he mm -hmm. left the balcony and the the comedian turned to me and he was like, I'm so sorry, like. That was so uncalled for and all this stuff. And I just turned and I was like, but he's right. Like, I did eight <laughs> minutes about how tiny my butthole is. <laughs> and so it's like, it's like, I can't stand here and be like, how dare he say too much gay stuff? Like, that's exactly what it was. If you like, if you bottled that up and sent it to Sirius XM, it would say Brian Millward. Quotation marks. Tiny too much butthole. Gay stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much. It was too much gay stuff. It was too much gay stuff for him. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, you know, and I was a random. You know, I'm not from Montreal. People didn't know my act. They mm -hmm. were coming to this apartment building to have a laugh. Yeah. And it was too much gay stuff for him. And that's perfectly acceptable, you know? And so I think we all kind of have to like check our motivations when we're performing and we're expecting so much from the audience where it's like, if it was someone say I became a household name and everyone knew mm -hmm. that when you come to my show, you're going to hear about Brian's tiny butthole. Tiny, tiny <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, and then if you, if you knew that and still paid for the money, well then that's on you. Yeah. That but would if be I walk into your apartment building <laughs> 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 and you hand me a microphone, <laughs> And I start talking about all the things I cannot put up my butthole <laughs> because it is so small. <laughs> yes, I share in some of that blame. Yeah. <laughs> I've infiltrated your space. I get it, you know? <laughs> it's fine, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> But then you get, but then you get surprised the other way too, where like I would go into a room and think, oh God, here we go. It's a lot of like straight men seemingly. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them in the back alley yet. Yeah, so when I'm you, like, you I look assume, out in an audience and you make a judgment of, oh, this isn't my audience. This isn't my audience. They're not going to get it. And then, you know, by the end of my set, it's like I could burp and they'd yeah. be like profound. <laughs> like they would go nuts. <laughs> and so it's like, you just have to have fun with it yes. and regard like I trust at the end of the day when I do comedy it's like I trust my jokes I trust the work I put into it I trust my delivery I trust my jokes so if someone doesn't get it whoopsie doopsie mm -hmm. like I'm laughing in my head because I'm like damn you still have like six more minutes of this there's no <laughs> like I love oh I love <laughs> when 
like seasoned comedians. Sorry for the podcast people. Uh, I did air quotes <laughs> when seasoned comedians <laughs> will be like, oh, yeah, when I'm in a room and I'm, you know, things aren't going well and I can feel it from the audience. I just go, oh, what can I switch it to? Like, depending on what the audience is into, mm-hmm. I'll switch it up and I'll do something different. Huh? The audience doesn't have a microphone. How do you know what they've done that day? Mm-hmm. Like what? Yeah, maybe. What, like... what topics are they throwing out at you for you to just start riffing on? And also, <laughs> how much goddamn material do you have that if someone was like, come quads, you'd be like, well, let me tell you all. Oh, like, <laughs> what are you pulling out of? <laughs> it's like, it's like I am like one of those street bikes. I've got one fucking gear. Yeah. And if you don't like it, hold hold on tight for another five minutes and it'll be over mm-hmm. and we can all move on <laughs> and it's okay it's one thing that makes me kind of grateful to be only at this level of comedy success at this point that like i'm not I doing love that like she threw in success just so everyone knows. no i mean like i i'm grateful that that when i bomb i only yeah. have to bomb for like a maximum of 15 <laughs> minutes as opposed to being a headliner and having to bomb yeah. for an hour. Well, I just watched the Tiffany Haddish special and she talks about her Miami bomb, which is like it's on tape. And it's like she is not just a headliner. She is a household name. Yeah. So there's a whole nother expectation on top of that. And so to have, gosh, to watch that show and watch her literally like half the theater, it's a 4,000 seat theater. And to have half the theater walk out and then have her be like, this is going so poorly. Anyone who wants to come walk to the front of the theater, to the stage, I will take a photo with you and I will <laughs> sign whatever you want me to sign because mm-hmm. this isn't going to go anywhere. <laughs> like, that's the scariest thing. It's terrifying. Absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Like, my skin is crawling right now. And then, but then we see like freaking, and I'm saying this as a nobody. We see nobodies. I've seen people who are nobodies in the grander scheme of things. Like, mm. Tiffany Haddish ain't losing sleep over us. Like, I see nobodies do, you know, poorly. Not even bomb. It's just like, oh, the jokes didn't land the way they usually land. Mm. Um, and I've seen people storm. Storm out of the bar. Storm out of the club. Not talk to people. You know, what, they have to go process it. Mm-hmm. It's like, no. Whereas, like, somebody like Tiffany Haddish can be like, okay, everybody come take a picture with me then. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> you're not enjoying this? Too bad. Come and get an well, autograph. And then do a Netflix special and explain it to everyone. Yeah. You know? It just frustrates <laughs> me. Like, I think a lot of the times we take ourselves so seriously in those circumstances. Yeah. And you've just got to be able to. If I can't laugh at myself, who the hell else I think will it's laugh just about me? letting go. Yeah. Right? It's just about, like, being like Teflon and like not letting stuff <laughs> stick to that you. That sounds a lot like science. It does sound like science. <laughs> science and cooking. Um, <laughs> but, mm. but yeah, you just like, you have to just kind of like release and, and let things go. Like, yeah. um, I'm not great at uh, handling any sort of failure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, it, if something doesn't go well, if I don't perform to my own expectations not just Mm -hmm. in comedy but just in anything i take it very hard and Mm -hmm. i'm also um just in general very easily embarrassed yes and i take embarrassment really hard i do not deal well with it Mm -hmm. um and i also to quote my therapist don't deal well with disappointment Uh, (laughs) so so when i bomb it's like it's very painful do you internalize it yeah, like and do you feel like in your body you feel it yeah, I happening. Yeah, feel it. Yeah. I feel it. And um uh I don't know, it's something that I've been sort of like paying attention to. Like I had a <laughs> I had a bomb like uh I don't know, I guess this would be like a month ago now. Okay. But um it wasn't even like it wasn't t- a total complete bomb. Like it wasn't like absolutely nobody laughed and right. the audience hated me. Mm. It was just like wow, this was like 20% of what this should have gotten mm. like based on previous times yeah. of me doing the set, that kind of thing. I was just like really off my game that night, I guess. And I was host. Well, everyone there could have also been assholes. So yeah, it's like, well, maybe. Nah, nah, nah. Um, but I was also hosting the show, <laughs> which meant that. So you've got to come back. Yeah. Time and time again. Yep. So I went up first. Um, I couldn't get the, 
like uh, they they kind of enjoyed some of the stuff I did in the middle of my set at the beginning, but then by the That's end, not where the good stuff's nope, supposed to be. <laughs> nope. They, by the end, they were just very quiet and uh, like uh, we were short on time as well, so yeah. I couldn't keep going no. to try and get a laugh out of them to bring the first comic up. Uh-huh. So I was just like, I was like, blah 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 blah, <laughs> silence. All right, you guys ready to start the show? <laughs> And then I had to bring the first act up to like, a completely cold audience. And like, I, oh, it makes me so happy. I love doing bullet when the host oh my God. destroys any energy in the room. Yeah. And then I was just like, okay, go on and do you ready to clean up my mess? Ooh, yeah, it was it makes bad. Me so happy. And uh, then like I got off stage and I like I was taking it very hard. Yeah. Like it was one of those days where like some of the time I can like, have something like that happen and then just kind of like laugh it off, mm. you know, and like go into the green room at the other comics and be like, sorry, guys, like, I don't know what's <laughs> up there. Not yeah. into what I'm selling today. Yeah. Um, but this particular day, I was like, I, I took it really personally, mm. but I had the awareness to be like, oh, I'm noticing that I'm taking this very personally today. Yeah. Like, and then I kind of tried to sit down and think like, OK, what's going on right now? Yeah. Like, why am I taking this so hard? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm the host, so I got to go back up there. I can't just leave the venue. No. Uh, You know, I can't like, like, I felt like I could cry, which is not like my usual reaction to to not doing well. Yeah. Um, But I was like, I could very easily start crying right now. And I was like, what's going on? So I had to kind of like go inside and be like, all right, like, what do you need? Like, what do you need to like say to yourself? Like, what do you need to like get yourself to snap out of this? Yeah. Well, I think I had, and I think that's the biggest at least for me, the biggest quality or the most important quality that someone can have is Mm self-awareness. And so being able to recognize the feelings that you're having in your body, I find, because the body will react quicker than your mind will. Yeah. Like when you feel angry, when you feel sad, when you feel joy, when you feel any sort of intense emotion, it's not just something in your mind. You're not just thinking of happy thoughts or thinking of sad thoughts. Your body is reacting mm-hmm. to that emotion. So when you're angry, for instance, you might feel like like uh, heat, like rising. And or you, you can might feel notice little things like you your notice you're clenching cl- your, yeah. or your, your hands. Your neck is getting, yep. t- I get the tightness in the neck. Um, I get the pit in the stomach. I get all that sort of stuff. And it's being able to recognize those bodily signals that are going oh gosh this isn't just you know it's not just you gain off stage going whoopsie doopsie doo 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 mm-hmm. it's like oh this is some something's happening to me it's it's hitting some nerve and either i have to like now that i've recognized the sensations i'm feeling i have to um attend to them and whether it's you know taking that time and talking to yourself um or leave. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Now, like, or, oh my god, or can you imagine yourself from a particular situation? <laughs> but I had the embarrassment thing happen to me last week, actually, because I was playing volleyball, and it's this recreational volleyball team league that I'm on, and I love playing volleyball. But we were our team; we were never good from the get go. No one, you know, it. That's just what it was. Mm-hmm. And so we had the playoffs, and the craziest thing was, was like, even though we were in one of like the lowest groups on the totem pole like on the roster because then you only play people in your own you know like division or whatever yeah, yeah. like awful like i don't we're know all sports bad. terms yeah, do I. I don't know <laughs> but it's like we're all bad and we're all playing together but yet you can still get like a gold silver bronze within your little group of four teams which mm. means one team doesn't get anything <laughs> out of the four teams and that was my team we were shitting the bed so badly and I could feel it was like it was like I had reverted back into my grade six self. It was like all that embarrassment that I'd felt, you know, doing phys ed doing, and constantly being reminded that like I was never I just wasn't the athletic type. No matter how badly I tried, no matter how badly I wanted to be recognized for that, it just would never work out for me. And so there I am playing recreational, mind you, recreational homosexual volleyball (laughs) so a lot of flicks of the wrist let's say as we're serving um so as i'm doing that and and the logical side of my brain is going brian none of this matters none of this matters but my body was going through those same sensations yeah all those feelings 
that I would feel where you where I just wanted to literally cower. Like I just wanted to like crunch my shoulders up and yeah, just and like curl and, up into a little and ball. shut down. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to just zone out and go, oh, like, girl, I ran into the net. I ran into the net <laughs> full force. Like freaking Ariel getting bottom trawled out of the ocean. <laughs> like in the net. And everyone's laughing. Everyone's laughing. And it was so, it was so awful, the sensation. And even though, even though the logic side of my brain was going, Brian, objectionably, that was the funniest fucking thing that's ever happened. You literally just ran into a net. Like, if this was anyone else, you would have been pointing and laughing at them and going, yeah. God, shake it off. It's no, but like, happens to the best of us. But because I was in it, my body couldn't just go, oh, it's all fine. No, it's so it hard. Was deep, it's so it was like hard. entrenched into my my body was like feeling it all. Yeah, I have not mastered the art of like going outside of yourself in those moments of embarrassment mm. and being able to see it objectively and just laugh at yourself. Like I, yeah. I can some of the time, but I, uh, I am not perfect at that yet. And no, like I still like I have certain key embarrassing moments from my life that yeah. every once in a while one will come back into memory and I'll literally shudder. Yeah, like I'll actually physically shiver. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking about yeah that, that moment from the past, I have so much trouble getting over embarrassment. But I feel like that's one of the great things about, like, that's at least I started to recognize through that experience on Thursday was like, oh, that's why I enjoy using stand-up comedy. Like, that's a tool. Because someone said to me afterwards, they were like, because I said to them, I was like, I have not felt that level of embarrassment in years. They were like, but don't you do stand-up comedy? And I was like, yeah. And through my comedy, I exposed some of the most embarrassing moments in my life. But I'm the one holding the microphone. Yeah, you I'm take in power control. over them. I'm, yeah. I'm saying the joke before you can say the joke. I'm, you know, manufacturing the story so that way I look better. Yeah, it's a really different different dynamic. It's a totally different dynamic. And so I think it's kind of funny. Like, and I think, yeah, it's this expectation from other people where they go, oh, because you tell jokes and you're kind of goofy and you're silly, then you must be cured of embarrassment. Yes, and I think like Lucy. people under <laughs> like uh, people who who don't do comedy will see comedians as being necessarily uh, a higher level of confidence and self assuredness yeah. yes. and and things like that. And to an extent, we are because it would naturally take those well, things for us to get on stage in the delusional. first place. And we are a little delusional. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. We're not like beyond. Uh, yeah, we're not beyond. Things. We're not beyond me. No, we're not. No, <laughs> no, we're not. No. <laughs> Should we get into your assignment? Yeah, let's do it. I okay. love how you're like. Before we start, you're like, we'll start with your assignment, and then we'll get into other topics. Oh, and, and then we, we just, just like chit chat yeah. about. I could just talk to you forever, right? <laughs> I love that. That's so sweet. So the assignment that I gave you was yes. that you had to do an act of kindness every day. Mm-hmm. How did that go? <sighs> I think it went well. Just to give people context, we're recording this on Sunday, and I was given the task, was it Monday night or Tuesday morning? Uh, something like that. So I think Tuesday was my first day of actually doing a kind thing, and then I had to do one thing every single day until now. I was originally terrified of the assignment because I, in my mind, acts of kindness are like little random things. Like it, Like you have to be in a situation and then react in kind like you have to yeah instead of this where you kind of because you have to do it on purpose you sort of have to manufacture a situation to be kind exactly instead of just being like oh i see an opportunity for kindness here i'll take it exactly and then also the idea of like well what if i go through a day because you know i have a normal nine to five job i do you know so it's like what if during this day something doesn't just bubble up that i recognize Mm -hmm. and now i've failed the assignment (laughs) (laughs) so I started, have you, did you follow any of them? Did you know any of them? Oh, great. Clearly someone's not looking at my Facebook page. But anywho. Um, Apparently my algorithm isn't putting you on there, so. <laughs> need to talk to Mr. Facebook But also and I wouldn't want to have. Oh, okay. Like, I want to hear of, about it right now. Oh, okay. For the sake of artistic integrity. Yeah. Okay. So essentially Tuesday was the first day and you had sent in a message to me. You said start, because I said, well, what is, what? is an act of kindness or what would warrant on this podcast be an act of kindness. He said, well, start, start small, start with strangers, start with, you know, little things and then try to build your way up. 
So Tuesday went by and I didn't feel like I did anything necessarily that kind. I'm sure I must have held a door for someone. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I must have smiled at people, but I didn't feel like I'd really accomplished the goal. So I was sitting at home and I was like, okay, you know, by myself at nighttime, I'm like, what the heck am I going to do today? And I thought of, uh, uh, I think like Star Wars was coming out this weekend or something crazy. And I was like, oh, let me check my scene points. Let me see if I've got any scene points. I might take a friend. Oh, I did see to this a movie. One. Yeah. And then, and I thought I've got a friend in Oshawa and she's got, you know, a boyfriend and they've been together for a couple of years. And I thought, oh, wouldn't that be nice if I kind of surprised them and treated them to a movie this weekend? Wouldn't that be sweet? And then I went on my scene thing and realized that I had 16 free tickets. Like I just acute because I've got the visa card. So it's mm -hmm. like I'm just racking up points, you know, every which way. And I was like, oh, isn't that something? So then as I was, you know, finessing what movie I'd send them to, I said, well, am I really going to see any movies? Like, am I really going to see any movies over the holidays? Like, yes, I want to see Star Wars and I want to see other things. But like, am I really going to? Am I really going to see 16 movies? Yeah. Am I really going to see 16 movies this holiday season? And I thought, you know what? It's about time that you just give these scene points away. And so I went on to Facebook and I made a post and I pretty much said, like, you know, what I lack in RSP <laughs> funds, <laughs> I make up in scene points. And if anyone, you know, there's 16 tickets up for grabs. And if anyone or if you know anyone who could really use just a break, you know, from the holidays and everything, and you just want to go see and escape, you know, and go to see a movie like it's on me. You just have to send, you know, all the information which movie you want to see, the time, the place, you know, whatever. And then I would go into my thing, buy the tickets for the particular show and email them to the person. And then it was that was my little act of kindness. So I ended up giving away all the tickets. That's the wonderful. tickets were gone. Brian, I did see that one. And yeah. that was that's very sweet. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> Here's the thing, though. What? <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Because I, cause I'm <laughs> trying to be a good person. <laughs> but, and I told myself beforehand, I said, Brian, you're putting this on Facebook. You don't know who's going to message you. Mm -hmm. I can't control who's going to reach out and ask for these tickets. And I even made it, like, in my own mind, I made it a point to be like, there there's no there's no criteria it's movie tickets mm -hmm. like you know if someone wants to go see a movie they can go see a movie i'm not gonna you know wait for the sappiest story you know it's just if someone feels like they could really use this great i'll give it to them no questions asked turns out i noticed that my kindness isn't as unconditional as i wish it was <laughs> Like, I wish that I was just this, like, what was her name? Teresa. Mother Teresa. <laughs> why? For some reason, I was going to be like, Susan? I don't know why I thought Susan. <laughs> like, Mother Mama Susan. Susan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is a very loving Mother Susan somewhere in the world. Um, but yeah, so I thought, in my mind, I said, I, in an ideal world, this will just all go smoothly, and then I've done it, and great. But, oh, God, people are dumb because I said in the post uh, you have to send me because I have to buy the tickets for you mm -hmm. I can't just give you scene points I have to buy the tickets for you so I said in the post I need the movie name I need the theater I need the time and the date that you want like you've got to plan all this and yeah. then tell me and there's your tickets the amount of people that messaged me and were like hey do you still have a couple tickets free and I was like yeah sure like what movie do you want to see? Oh, what movie would you suggest? Uh. <laughs> I'm not freaking Ticketmaster over here. Like, figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. My kindness will only go so far. My kindness is, here's the points. Here's the tickets. Not, oh, well, let's chit-chat about what movies you want to see. And then they go, oh, well, do you think I should go see it? You know, this, what theater? What th I'm like... No, this is not my side hustle. This is like you putting in the legwork to mm -hmm. figure out what time and what movie and what works for you. Then you message me and I give you the tickets. Like, then one friend was just like, well, can I see a movie with you? No. <laughs> no, uh, that's not the point of this post. <laughs> that's not 
not the point of the pose. She's like, well, I've been saying I want to see the Joker for months. You never gave me a time. You never planned. All you said was, I want to go see the Joker. Cool. End of discussion. Great. Right. Never gave me another time. Never, you know, never did the homework. Oh, but it's my, oh, you want to go, to, like, oh, you want to fly a Cuba? So now I've got to make all the arrangements? No. You want to go see something? Figure it out. Figure it out. And then I even said to her, and she knows because I called her yesterday. I told her I was going to talk shit about her today on this podcast. Because she was like, <laughs> she's like, I can't wait to hear it. Right. God said it to me. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not going to like it. I full on said to her because we were having this conversation. I'm saying, how has she not clued in? Because I, I said to her, I was like, well, because I said, uh, uh, well, when do you want to go see this movie? Oh, in the new year. In the post, it says for people who really want to go see a movie this weekend. Mm -hmm. Not 2020. Like, I was like, we can just go do a movie night. We're friends. <laughs> yeah, they're just somebody We're friends. I'll your just buy actual you. friend. Like, yeah, we could just go see a movie sometime. <laughs> yeah, anytime. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, oh, well, I'd rather, you know, now that you've made this, now that you've given us this option, I'd rather just do this option. I said, so hold on. Would you rather, because I said, let's not judge. You're being kind. I said, would you rather, um... Just go do a movie night. You know, would you rather just us or no? Would you rather us go do this together? We'll go take these two tickets and we'll go see the movie or whatever. Or would you rather me give these tickets to someone who could possibly really need it? Mm -hmm. And she said, I think we'll just use yours since they're already there. <gasps> and I <laughs> was like, oh. <laughs> I hate people. <laughs> I hate them so much. Because here I am trying to be a good person. Practice kindness. But I realize that my kindness, unfortunately, comes with conditions. Yes. <laughs> and that's such an awful thing to admit. Yeah. But that's kind of where it took me. So then for the rest of the week, I was kind of asking myself these questions of like, I would hope that most people would consider me kind. You know, I'm... I treat everyone very pleasantly. I'm a big smiler. I like to talk to people. But it forced you to kind of like reflect on... Reflect on it. <laughs> your and also own relationship of, with kindness. Yeah. And also kind of reflect on like what... Like it's one thing to be kind to everyone, like a pass fail. But then it started making me question of like, oh, is... Do I... Do I extend the same level of kindness to everyone? Or is that where you would see variation mm -hmm. in my behavior? Mm -hmm. You know... You know, I think most everyone would say, oh, yeah, Brian's a kind person, but maybe depending on different people, depending on my relationships with them, depending on, you know, so many factors that I really haven't even dived into. It's like, could I be, you know, could I be giving people different amounts of kindness? And that was the first act of kindness of the, the first week. damn day. That was the first day. So then I just started <laughs> telling people they look pretty. <laughs> <Could you> have... <laughs> no, then... Then Wednesday, I got I got muffins for all of my coworkers at work. I brought in a couple dozen muffins for them. And then on Thursday, which was a fun day, because that was the volleyball day, the embarrassing day. Mm -hmm. um, there was sort of this, and I won't go into the details of it, but there was a serendipitous sort of uh, conversation that I got to have with someone who I felt that I'd really, not wrong, but there was guilt on my part that I mm -hmm. felt that I hadn't expressed yet. And I felt really, and it had been really weighing down on me. And fortunately I was able to finally see this person in person and got to sort of have that conversation that I've been waiting for weeks to have. And that was a great moment. And I felt, Oh, there's my kindness there. Cause, the, and it was that beautiful sort of like the opportunity presented itself. Yeah. The like authentic experience of kindness. Exactly. Exactly. And because I was already in that mindset, I felt like I was more, I don't know, willing to go there and be vulnerable and just kind of not be so concerned. Yeah. Because you'd put yourself in a mindset already of like, when I see an opportunity for kindness, We're I'm going to act on it. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then Friday, I don't think I did anything particularly kind. <laughs> what was Friday? Oh, what was Friday? Friday, I went to a Christmas party. Uh, like, I was nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. <laughs> There's a difference, a big difference between being nice and being kind. <laughs> like, I'm sure. Very big difference. Oh, I can't remember what I did Friday. 
Friday, no. you were cordial. <laughs> Friday, I tolerated people. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think, and then today I brought you guys donuts, which is my act of kindness. Oh, Thank and then you. you're welcome. And then yesterday I made, me and my friends, we did a really dorky holiday photo shoot where we all wore white t-shirts and blue jeans. <laughs> like we wanted to go real tacky. Mm. And so, but we we had intended to print these photos off and make little Christmas cards and it just never ended up happening. Um, and so yesterday I made like a little tacky Christmas card thing online and sent it to all of them with like just a really sweet message. Cute. Um, and yeah, that was sort of, oh, and I bought a friend, uh, I bought a friend dinner yesterday. Nice. Because that was sort of our one time seeing each other before the holidays. So I thought, oh, let's go. Mm-hmm. But I also, there were two options and I also picked the cheaper restaurant. So <laughs> <laughs> there were conditional. My, my kindness is conditional. Conditional kindness. Like, yes. Conditional kindness. That's the hashtag for 2020. <laughs> That's how I'm leaving this. This. Say, that's how I'm leaving the century. Oh. <laughs> We're not at the end of the century well, yet. You got eighty more years. Technically, the end of every year is the end of a century. If you that's choose true. If you just can't from choose to count only hundred years back. Yeah. Okay. I follow the Mayan calendar, so this is the end of a century. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, oh, you Brian. have to think so much more about what you say when you're being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I just love you. <laughs> so I'm curious, mm-hmm. in your like scanning of your environment for opportunities for kindness, mm-hmm. did you happen to notice yourself paying more attention to other people's acts of kindness towards other people? I wish I could say yes. <laughs> Actually, no, there was some really nice, like, I saw some really nice moments happen. Like, there was one of them, which now I remember because I can't remember what Friday's was. There was a, a gentleman who who works, I would, you know, I don't know what his title is, but I would I would describe him as, like, the, cons- the custodian for the building that we all work in. Mm-hmm. And he's such a pleasant gentleman. And we always have, like, little, like, how you doing, bud? Oh, good. How are you? Good. And then we kind of go off in our own directions but then they had a potluck at the at the building on friday and so people it gave everyone the opportunity to really sit down and have longer conversations Mm -hmm. and so being able to have that time like i and i was consciously thinking of it i said you've been meaning to ask this man so many questions like how's his family you know like just to get to him because he is so pleasant he's so lovely um but you know, we're always just running off to work and doing things. So it's always so superficial. So even though I would still hope to have even longer conversations with him, I really appreciated like making being presented that extra time to talk to him. But then also in my own mind, making that time and being like, no, 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 you've got some extra minutes. Let's let's connect. Yeah, let's really connect. Yeah. Or just get to know each other a bit better. Oh, and that was that. really sweet. And so seeing you, I think Pollocks are amazing. Because people, for a lot of people, cooking and providing food is like a huge, you know, a sign of love and, you know, connecting people and all that sort of stuff. And so I thought it was a really sweet moment. There's also something really intimate about food. Yeah. Like about, there's a certain... Go on. Well, I I don't know. I think (laughs) about this a lot. I I could think about this in like multiple stages of stuff. But Mm. uh, if I go with like the potluck example. So there's... A vulnerability in having made food Mm -hmm. and then having other people eat it, right? Where, like, the quality of your food is going to be judged and and stuff. You know, like, there's a a certain amount of, like, vulnerability that it takes to present something that you made for Mm -hmm. other people to eat. Um, Then there's also, like, an intimacy of, like, eating in front of other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, However minor it is, you know? Like, there is something, like, intimate about that. Um, I think... The most intimate thing is grocery shopping with someone. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And to, you know, I've never, there's only, you know, I could count them on my hand who I've actually gone grocery shopping with. Yeah. Pi- okay. Picture in your head for a moment. Take a moment here to picture somebody who you know half well, or maybe somebody who you're like early into dating or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And then picture. Them just coming along with you while you do your grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That's a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> right? You would not want that person at the grocery store with you. No. No. No, 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 no. No. It's intimate. It's because it is. that's why it's been like, <laughs> because I had this moment, moment was like, I don't know, like, like a, a while, while back <laughs> where somebody that I've been on like a couple dates with uh, was like, was, like, <laughs> oh, you're going grocery shopping after this? Well, like, we're right here. Like, I'll just pop in with you and like, walk with you. And I was, what like, a monster. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Why, 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 mm. <laughs> Like, I I couldn't identify at first as we were walking into the grocery store why I was so uncomfortable. Right. And then once we were in there, I realized, like, oh, it's because, like, this is really intimate. Yeah. <laughs> this is, like, like a level of intimacy that <sighs> we're not we're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> you don't and get to I've, see what I buy. I'm extremely judgmental in grocery stores. Right? So you, you're you so imagining judgmental. that the other person is going to be just as judgmental of yeah. you? Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I would not. I would not want that. I feel like I would... I would rather fart in front of my partner before taking them to a grocery store. I have really no choice in that. I fart in front of people almost immediately. That's so... Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> I don't you know, most of us, want you know, it to be that way. Most of us just do that and then try to pass it off to someone else. But it's great that you're <laughs> so forthcoming. I, you know what? I just feel like there's no point in hiding it at this point. Uh, um, <laughs> if you're around me for any any extended period of time. I'm, um, I have not stopped farting. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to fart in front of you. <sighs> it's usually going to be while I'm doing something else, like laughing. Really? Uh, yeah. like it's, You have that little control? Yes. <laughs> Tracy, no. Yes, you gotta suck it back up. No, I, like, <laughs> you, don't, you, don't you feel the. It's like when you blow a bubble, like bubble gum. <laughs> you blow the bubble gum, and before you feel that tension, you're like, "Ooh, it's about to pop." No, and I you know. Go, so see, and you suck the gum back. Here's in. the thing: is like I'm able to exercise that kind of control most of the time. That's why it only happens when I'm doing something else. Because Some, for a I, moment, I've forgotten. On. But. The first for, thing, for a moment, I'm just focused on laughing, on the... and then I've forgotten no. to be paying attention. To Unacceptable. Not I love when it's like, oh, when I'm doing other things, and I'm like, oh, it's gonna be something where she's like bent over or something <laughs> like physical. Oh, when I laugh, no, laughing no, is physical. That's a basic. <laughs> that's a basic, like a commonplace thing. It's not like you only laugh like once every three years so it's like a surprise like your body doesn't know how to react like you laugh all the time i know you laugh all the time I control know. your damn bum i can't <laughs> <laughs> i can't you know it's one of those things like but then again I, <laughs> from from me as a kind person also i accept you yes thank you and i love you and and thank you, you know what Thank you. We're Brian. all we're all human. Oh my god! I like no I, one's beyond me. I would love to be the girl who like six months into a relationship is like is like oh, I still haven't farted in front of him, you know, and like, <laughs> like, like just won't let it happen. Like like I have a friend who I'm convinced has never farted. I'm, <laughs> I'm convinced. I've no like she terribly like, bloated. Is that why? I'm sure she. I'm sure she does. But I've, I've known away. her. I have known her for like fifteen years, and I've never heard her fart. Wow! And it, like she just has a, a level of control that I will never have. Well, I feel like that's something though too that always kind of drives me nuts is when people because it used to be <laughs> the notion was the more mystery you could have in a relationship, like the more that you kept your your mate or whatever yep. wanting more. Yeah, that was considered alluring. There's no mystery, with and me. then I feel. <laughs> But then I feel like it kind of like the pendulum swung the other way. And then sort of the marker of like what a healthy relationship is, is like, like showing <laughs> everything. Yeah. Showing everything all the time. Yeah. Like and a I complete like, level of like transparency. And yeah. And I feel like there's got to be. And granted, I've I've never been in a long term relationship. So I don't know. I don't know what my gauge is or what my comfort level is. But I feel like it's just got to be some. It's got to fall somewhere in the middle. If you're holding yourself to such crazy like extremes, it's not going to make sense. Do you want to hear the story of the first time that I ever farted in front of a partner ever? It's pretty good. Wait, was this at like like eleven years old? Like, no, you've been <laughs> tooting away your whole life. <laughs> well, I have been tooting away my laugh. whole life, but this would have been. I would have been. What happened? Maybe like seventeen, eighteen. Okay, good for you. And. uh... <laughs> 
I I was at my boyfriend's house and, and we this were, was your first boyfriend. This was my first like yeah. real boyfriend. Gotcha. Like I had had like whatever like school boyfriends and stuff like the kind of boyfriends you had. Yeah, we all got married on the hill yeah, one exactly, time in grade right? one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry for this obnoxious cough. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm like 17, 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, my boyfriend is a couple years older. Oh, uh, wait. Like only like only like three years older. But at the what? time, it was like ooh. But you're like, in high school and he ain't in high school. Yeah, it was like I was no, in I was in grade Tracy, twelve. Where was, was I to I, smack you? I was in grade twelve. He was in second year university. Oh, no. Um, so I'm like at again. I so love even that you're doing this. I'm just judging. <laughs> like this, so is about, this is so, supposed to be about you being like I farted, and instead I'm like <laughs> you forget to hoard yourself out to a twenty year old. But continue. So, um, it's like yeah, I'm uh, mm-hmm. in grade twelve, and yeah. I'm. Uh, at my boyfriend's apartment, which like I'm in high school, so it's like he has an apartment. You know? <laughs> like, so I'm like I'm at his apartment. Um, we've been dating for a little mm. while at this point, like mm-hmm. at least a few months, and um, I can't remember exactly how long. And we're uh, sitting on his couch watching television, and he, his couch is like um, it's like an old like ca- yeah. Was he hot? He, Okay, um, great. Um, I'm just setting the stage. I'm like, I think it's great that you're going to all like <laughs> the accoutrements that were in his apartment, but like, no, 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 it's important. So the the couch was it good? The couch was like 1970s style, like suede couch, and it had uh, the armrests on the couch were like wood on the top. Yes, it had that little like wood decoration, yes. you know. Uh-huh. And uh, so we're, we're sitting on the couch watching television, and like he's sitting, and then I'm like lying with my head on the armrest and I've got my legs over his lap, right? Cute. So, like, yeah, 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 yeah. and it's just, like, cute. I've, I've used that position. Cute uh-huh. day at my boyfriend's house. Mm-hmm. And uh, some something happens on the on the show and I, like, lift my head up and say something to him about whatever mm-hmm. just happened. <laughs> and then I put my head back, but not as gently as I thought I was about to, and ended up smashing the back of my head on the wooden part of the armrest. So I, there's a smashing sound. I smash my head i scream and i fart all at the same time smash scream and fart all at the same time that was the first time i had ever farted in front of a boy and you're sitting essentially on him yes (laughs) (laughs) and at that point i was like okay well i guess this is who i am I just have to accept that these moments are going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. What was his reaction? Um, He laughed hysterically. It was a yeah. very funny thing that had just happened. And I was absolutely mortified. <laughs> now I think it's really See, funny. I... And now when it now when stuff like that happens, I just like I, I have to laugh in the moment. Yeah. Like I feel like to go back to what we were saying about like embarrassment mm. and stuff like that mm. with like the... <laughs> You know, it's like, I was gonna it's be like, worn it's off. these things that you don't the embar- control over. Beautiful the embarrass- control. <laughs> the embarrassment of farting in front of somebody, like, yes. like has worn off because yes. it's happened so many times well, that no. I'm just like, if I s- wasted all of my time feeling embarrassed yeah. about this, I would never get anything done. I'd yeah. never be able to move on. <laughs> well, I feel like that's the thing is we go through, like, in life. <laughs> I love you. I'm just- told this story on tape before <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i have <laughs> I alex like, if you're you listening look... i'm sorry that i farted on you oh bless <laughs> i'm sorry that i farted on you like 13 years ago <laughs> <laughs> but that's the crazy thing is i feel like that's like when <laughs> unfortunately when they say like lessons in life that is lesson it's like in we live for such a long time. I know people say life is short, but we do live for such a long time that um, we exhibit patterns of behavior. Things are going to, like, you're going to, all of us are going to have embarrassing <laughs> farting stories over and over and over again, right? Like, you, you throughout your life, you're going to go through rejection. You're going to go through embarrassment. You're going to go through joy. You're going to go mm-hmm. through all these, you know, huge moments, whether they be positive or negative. And it's not just going to happen once. Yeah. It is going to happen over and over and over again. And the trick is catching yourself when you're starting to feel it and you go, hold on. 
I'm reacting like instinctively, irrationally. Like it's like I'm taking in this information of, oh my God, I just farted in front of, oh my God, mm-hmm. I just, and, and I think I've got a concussion. Oh my God, <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Right. And when that's your first time at bat, you ain't going to make the right decision. Yeah. You're going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to add to it, right? You're going to exacerbate those emotions. Mm-hmm. But then as you experience these things over and over and over again, hopefully you clue in that your, that your body is reacting the same way. And if you can catch yourself and then go, hold on, do I want to react the way that my body is impulsively trying to get me to react? Or do I take a different path? And if you're able to take yourself, like you were saying, take yourself out of that equation and look down at yourself and go, okay, which way do I want to go? That's when you finally, you know, break out of the matrix. (laughs) (laughs) But then you've, but then that's when you really have control over the situation because you're going, okay, I'm not just going to follow the impulses of my body Mm -hmm. i'm gonna really like take in context of the situation and go is it really appropriate that i you know lose it right now is it appropriate you know is it really worth me you know beating myself up and feeling embarrassed about this or do i just kind of go like poopsie poopsie and then get on and like the more especially with embarrassment the more you're willing to uh act with immediacy Mm -hmm. and like laughing at yourself Mm -hmm the less embarrassing that moment becomes. But you have to do it over and over and over again. It takes practice like anything. And it's the same with kindness. So I'm practicing by just farting in front of people all the time by accident and then just laughing. and Yeah. (laughs) But it's the same with the positive ones too. Like like we get stuck on embarrassment and things like that because they're negative situations and they're negative emotions. And so we're always trying to look to like how do we remedy these negative moments? Yeah, or in how our do we lives? limit them? Totally, and stuff like that. When that's actually totally not the way to recover better from those moments at all. Right. The more embarrassing moments you have, the better you're going to deal with embarrassment. Totally. And at the same time, too, I feel like you've got to, like, we've got to take that same formula, that same practice, and put it towards the positive ones. So when you think of like kindness, it's not simply just going around and thinking of yourself as being kind or believing in kindness. It's practicing it's it actively. It's practicing it. Yeah. It's noticing, like you mentioned, noticing the opportunity, you know, noticing that moment where your body reacts and goes, oh, I could help. Oh, oh, I could, you know, I could be friendly. I could take some mm-hmm. extra time. I can, you know, do this. I could do something, a little special thing for them. Um, and then acting on it. And going, oh, do I want to, you know, do I want to follow this impulse of like, oh, I should do some, you know, screw the bank account. Let me get, you know, let me get this one for you. Or, you know, saying that nice thing that, you know, might feel very, you know, vulnerable at the time. You go, oh, do I really want to, you know, do I really want to put it all out there? But then when you say it, the person goes, oh, my God, I'm so, oh, that means so much to me that you cared this much to say that. And it's like, you've got to, you've got to practice it. It is an action. Kindness is not a belief. Mm -hmm. If it was a belief, our government would be working differently. (laughs) If we all believed in kindness, you know, and that was enough, the world would be a different place. But it is not. It is based on our actions. And so you have to act on those impulses. Like, you have to notice them. You have to notice the opportunities. And then you have to make the decision of how you're going to act on them. And that's the that's the the thing that I noticed with doing this thing over the week, this whole task, was that it, it wasn't simply good enough for me to just sit at home by myself and ponder kindness. Yeah, and be like, mm, I'm kind. Yeah. My thi- look what at me does kindness thinking mean about to kindness. Me? Yeah. Go yeah. on to dictionary.com and figure out what does kindness mean to them? No, like, you got to get out into the world. You got to get into people's lives. Yeah. Huh? You got to make action mm-hmm. out of your good, kind thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Lend Lend a helping hand when someone farts. Right? Yeah. Extend that (laughs) olive branch. I didn't expect. It's okay, girl. You know, when I came into this today, I wasn't expecting so much of this podcast to be about me farting. But you know what? That's where we went. And I'm happy with it. We we end by me giving the guest a genuine compliment. Oh. (laughs) Do I have to give one back? No. No, Could you, you imagine? No, you do not. <laughs> if you 
shape one. And then you were like, and now? Oh my God. Can you imagine if that's what I had set up here? I think that's here? what you should do. <laughs> Why else are we in? Hold on. Why else do any of us get into the, like, into entertainment? If not for admiration. <laughs> like, no, you don't. You absolutely do not have to give me a compliment. Okay. Back, this is a one way thing. Oh, okay. If anything, I'd encourage you to just sit there and take it. I Take the compliment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me stretch first. <laughs> okay. Um, we have known each other for a while now. Yeah, I think it's been three to four years. Yeah. It would have been like, a, like a, we, we, we would have started yeah. comedy around the, the same, same time. time. Maybe yeah. like a year apart, but like pretty close. Yeah. And uh, uh, I wouldn't say we know each other very well. No. Um, we know each other better now. We know each other better now. Uh huh. After this. After this. Hour. <laughs> you know my embarrassing farting stories. There's so many more. Um. Anyway. Oh, I can't wait to but... see pictures of Alex after this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I, right from the very beginning of meeting you, I was like, oh, I, I like this person very much. Like, uh, you give off a really positive energy. And like, uh, well, you can be like sassy and cutting sometimes mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're right. It's all done with a really like a good spirit behind it. Like, I really I, I truly think that you are a kind person um, and you have sort of like a yeah, like a positive energy and a light about you um, that is. It's one of the reasons why you're so captivating on stage. And like, uh, I know when you like very, very first started comedy, like. Uh, you were already very good at it just because you have a really sparkling personality and uh, the audience gets on board with that very quickly. And like the show that you've built with SASS, like it's such a good show. And uh, like you can really see like, uh, I don't know, the I feel like this is part of the reason why we do comedy in the first place is that feeling of like looking at a whole audience and they've really come together as a group to enjoy something, you know, where like all of these people who came from like separate lives and they're all on their own, having their own separate nights and stuff like that are all one thing for a minute. And they're all just there together celebrating the person on stage. And that's what you kind of bring together in, in your show. And a lot of other times when you're on other shows and if, and like the audience isn't even your audience who's come there for you. It's like you have a, a way of like getting everybody on the same page, bringing everybody together as a group. Um, and uh, you're just like so silly and playful. And I love that. Well, thank you. That's so sweet. You're welcome, Brian. I really appreciate that. Thank you for doing this. This has been such a joy. <laughs> One oh. day I will fart in front of you, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like very like I'm very I'm very hyper aware now of the smell in the room. Just no, so I would tell clear. you. Oh my god, I would tell you. I wouldn't just <laughs> just no. I wouldn't just sneak attack also, you. Now, I would, every I time you laugh it. now, it's like no, I get scared. I I'm like, up. oh god. Is no, it I'm fine. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Nothing is. <laughs> anyway. Oh my gosh, this has been a delight. <sighs> Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to your new decade. <laughs> and uh, listeners, go be nice to yourself and remember that love is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>